Today is all about me sharing with you my tips and tricks that I've learned over the years for trailering and launching my boat. I'm also going to be sharing with you a free tool that you can make that's going to help prevent a catastrophe at the boat launch. And I know you're really going to appreciate that. Hey everybody, Dave here for the Frugal Sportsman and welcome back to another video. So today I want to share with you some of the tips and tricks and nuances that I've learned over my many years of trailering and launching my boat. I think it's going to be an awesome how-to video. And if you haven't done so already, I'd encourage you to check out my homepage. I've got lots of other DIY and how-to videos on there that I think are not only going to help deepen your outdoor experience, but hopefully save you some money in the process. So let's jump right into the video and get started. Tip number one starts before you even leave the house. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm assuming if you're going to be launching your boat, it's already on a trailer. And so you want to make sure that you need have everything in your boat that you need, every essential item. For instance, this is my big boat packing list. I have two boats. I have a smaller boat, smaller V-hull, and maybe you've seen that restoration I did. I'll put a link in the video in the description below. And this one is my big boat. This is my 17-foot glass tron behind me, and this is my ocean boat and my reservoir boat. And so what I do is a lot of the items on this list I share between both boats. So I print out my big boat list when I'm going out in the big boat and I go down the list. As I bring them and put them in the boat, I check them off. And I've got such items on here such as batteries, a flare gun, throw cushion, ropes, uh, fishing license, permits, all those different things that are essential for the day. And so I make sure they're in the boat and they're put away, ready to go. The other thing is I do it the night before. And the reason I do it the night before is because a lot of times if I'm heading to the shore, it's a two hour drive plus another half hour to pick up lunch, ice, bait, and everything else I need. So but in order for me to hit the water right before uh, it gets light, I need to leave here about 3.30 or 4 in the morning at the latest. So I don't want to get up even earlier and pack the boat then. Plus, I'm in a rush to get out of here. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So the very first thing you do is make sure you have a list that you've got all your essentials put in the boat the night before. Now if it's going to rain, you know, if it's raining that night, then it's just a matter of putting everything together just inside your garage bay door. If you have one or up on your porch under, under roof. And then it's just a matter of getting them and putting them in the boat. It shouldn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes to get everything put away. So that's tip number one. Tip number two also starts before you even leave the house. Now, if my boat has been sitting idle for two, three weeks, a month or so, then I want to make sure that everything's working. If it's only been down a few days or a week, I don't bother with this step. But if it's been sitting longer than that, I want to make sure that everything is in tune and it's ready to go, especially if I'm going to be driving two and a half hours to the shore in order to drop my boat in the bay. So one of the things I do is I just take a pair of uh, motor muffs and I hook up the hose, I put it on in my driveway, and I start the motor up. I let it run at idle for a few minutes, make sure everything's good, shut it off, break down everything, and I know I'm good to go. I always do this the day before, and I do it when the neighbors aren't sleeping. That's a big key right there. Now there's one more series of things we need to do before we head to the launch. And you're probably thinking, well, hey, I just wanted to learn how to launch my boat. But you know what? Trailering is an important part of launching. Because what good is it if you can't get the boat to the launch, or if you get it there, nothing works on it, or you don't get there at all because of an issue. So this is the final step I'm going to walk you through, and it's a series of things I do in order to make sure everything is secured, everything's working, and I'm good to go. So this is step number three. It's the walk around. Okay, I always start at the truck and work my way back. So let's start in the fr front here in the beginning. What I do is I make sure that my wire harnesses are all connected and that they're, they have a good connection and they're tight. Now you may notice that this harness here is a little short. Uh, it's great if I run it on my Xterra right here, but it doesn't work on the truck. It needs a little bit more length. So I went to Walmart, I bought an 18 inch extension harness here for about $4.97. And then I take this, loop it over the top, and come above the chain here. That makes me assured that it's not going to get anywhere near the road. I don't want it hanging down here real low. The other thing you want to look at up here is your chains. Make sure that when you attach your chains, which you must do, that they're crossed like this. If they are straight like that, 
and you have an issue up here where this breaks or the hitch comes off, it can drop right through into the pavement. But being crossed like this will catch it like that and save you the disastrous issue in the road. So those are the first two things I check for. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this, this ball is down on here solidly and I always lock it like this. You want to lock it for a couple of reasons. First off, so nobody steals your trailer once you're at the launch and you're out enjoying yourself. And it prevents this safety latch from undoing and popping up and everything popping off. There's no way it can happen if you have a lock here. Next thing you want to check is you want to make sure that your jack is up. Once you lower this down, okay, to put, put the uh, hitch on the ball, um, if you leave that down and go to drive off, you'll have this all bent. Don't ask me how I know that because I've already done it. So make sure that your jack is up and all the way in a firm position. The other thing I do is I just have an old tie down here, an old ratchet strap. I've used this a while. I bring this up and I hook this as a secondary safety for the eye. Some people have a chain on here. I use this because I know it's tight. Along with my strap here, I always make sure these are tight as well. So everything is up good here. Now let's take a walk down the boat and we'll look at some other things. A lot of times at night when I'm getting ready to launch, I have the ladder leaning the boat because it's just too tall for me. So this way I can climb in and out. I can set stuff here on the gunnel, get in and out and stuff. Make sure that you take your ladder and put it aside so that you don't drive off. I've already done that and the ladder falls down. You can break it. You can get it caught up under the lugs or whatever. So here's the other thing that you need to do, or at least I recommend is get yourself a set of bearing buddies. Um, these are really inexpensive. And what you do is you just pop the dust cap off here with a screwdriver. You tap this on lightly with a hammer, put a block of wood there, drive it on. And what it does is it seals everything up in here. Here's your grease fitting right here. And if you notice, there's a spring that's right around in here. So what you do is about twice a year, I grease this in the spring and later on in the summer. And all you do is you put some grease in there until that spring starts pushing out like that. What that does is, is completely packs this hub with grease so that any water that would try to get in, once it's submerged, can't. And it really saves your bearings. It saves you from taking them apart and working on them and all that. So a set of bearings, buddies, are really important. And I think there's two sizes. I think this is two and there's two and an eighth. So you got to match it to your trailer, but it's well worth it. Next thing you're going to want to do is I was working back here the other day. So um, you want to make sure that your ratchet straps or your tie downs or whatever you're using here are nice and tight so that you're not going to have issue going down the road. And these will loosen up over time. So check them periodically. Make sure they're hooked in. I have a special hook back here and there's a section usually on the trailer right here for fastening them. Uh, while I'm coming around here, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the motor up. I have it down now because I wanted to start it earlier. I'm just going to bring the motor up. And if you'll notice right here is a lock. So you bring that down and you just bring it down until it touches. That's it. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. I noticed by doing this, you, what you're doing is you're allowing the weight of the motor to be over the front of the transom. So you're not getting all this back pressure bounce on here. The, most of the weight of the motor is up here in the power head. And if you notice, the center line for that is just forward of this transom right here. So now that the motor's locked, what I'll do is I'll straighten it out, okay? Just like that, and that's the way I want it. I'll fasten that using a uh, tie down up there across the steering wheel. So once I have the motor lined up like I want it, all I do is I take this bungee cord like this, I bring it up and I hook it around right here on my ram ball, and then I come to the other side up here, hook it around the windshield. That locks my wheel in place so my motor doesn't flop back and forth when I'm driving along. Keeps it nice and straight and keeps all my weight directly down the center of the boat. Coming over here, you want to check this strap as well. Make sure that all straps are nice and tight. There we go. Again, I was working back here, so you want to make sure that. And I don't leave these dangling like this, but I only got the camera in one hand. 
I'll loop these around and pull them through so that they're not going to be anything that can be caught on them. Okay? So always inspect your tires. Make sure there's no gouges, no cuts. You've got air in them. Make sure that they're full, not dry rotted or anything like that. The other thing I'll do is I'll take a look up above. Maybe I might have left a rod in the holder up here and I'm going to be heading down my lane. There's lots of trees there. You can really mess things up. If I'm using my downriggers, I make sure that they're tight. They're not going to turn. The weights are inside the boat. I make sure that everything is inside that is not going to blow off, okay? Like that, that cushion is wrapped around the uh, um, fishing rod holder and everything else is good. If there's light things like that bucket, I'll store it up underneath the front. And so with that, um, everything looks pretty good. I've checked over my list. I've gone through it. The next thing I want to do is check the lights. And I've got a little trick to show you how to do that by yourself. So what I've done is gone ahead and turned the lights on. As you can see, the mar marker lights are working on the side. And the lights in the back here are working. So now what I do is I come back up and I'm going to check the directional. So I've gone up to the truck and as you can see that's working and so what I'll do is I'll go and check the other side. But how do you check the brake lights when um, there's no one else around to help you? You can't go up there and hold your foot on the brake and you can't come back here. I've got a little trick for that. This right here is the most important tool you can ever use to launch your boat with. Why? Well, let me show you exactly what this does. You'll notice up here I notched this out with an inch and a half um, drill and then I just rounded everything over just so it's nice and smooth, doesn't hurt my hands. And what I've done is I've measured this from the brake pedal down here to the bottom of my steering wheel once the brake pedal is depressed. And now I just hook it in. Let me show you how it works. So with the truck running, all I need to do is press the brake pedal down. Then I come up here, hook this portion under the steering wheel right here, and then put it on the brake pedal just like that. Then I just work my way out of the truck, and now I can go back And I can check the brake lights. And as you can see, they're both working. So as you pull up to the launch, there's usually a prep area like right there where you can uh, set up your ropes and undo your straps and get everything all ready. But because we're going to be filming this for you today, I'm just going to just pull up into the parking lot and uh, that way I'm not going to be in anybody's way um, that might want to set up their boat for launch. So let me go ahead and do that right now and then we'll do our walkthrough of exactly how we get things set up. Okay, if you remember what we did when we initially set out to come here, we started from the front of the boat and worked back. Now we're going to just do the complete opposite. We're going to start in the back and work our way forward. So let's jump to the back and we'll get things started. Okay, the very first thing I do is I put my plugs in the back of the boat here. Now my boat has three because um, I have three separate drain channels but uh, most boats usually only have one. So I want to make sure these are tight and these are what they call Garfield plugs. They're actually brass and they thread into a flange. It's right here. So two more to do. Okay with all three plugs in what I want to do is I want to drop the motor back down so I'm going to just lift it up, undo my safety and I'll drop it down, but not all the way. That's enough. I just want to bring it down enough so I have clearance when I back in. I can operate it from up there at the helm. So the next thing I want to do is just loosen my straps like this. I want to have just enough slack where I can get them off, but that they're still locked on here. And the reason for that is I have a roller trailer. You can see underneath here. And if I back down and something happens in the front, this boat can roll right off. So I always wait till I'm at the water's edge before I undo these. So I'll go do the other side and then we'll move on to the next step. The next thing I want to do is I want to prime the motor. So this is the bulb that I have a water separator right here. Uh, comes up from the, the gas tank into the bulb, the water separator and over to the motor. So one of the things you want to do is whenever you put a bulb in like this, a priming bulb, you want to have it in a vertical position. There's two checks in here. So when that gas comes up and it wants to drop down, the weight in the vertical position will keep those flappers down. 
if you put them horizontally and try to pump it, they don't always close and you won't get a really good um, pressurization of your carburetors. So you just want to push them like this and you'll start to feel the gas flow. And you want it, as soon as it starts getting hard, just like that, that's good. You're good to go. Now, if you don't have a water separator on here, on here which I highly recommend, um, then uh, I would also just, when you come up into your motor, put your primer bulb right at the motor so it hangs in a vertical position. And that'll do the same thing as this. So now it's time to take the strap off the front wheel, just like that. And I let it hang right there on the side. <clears throat> so I have it when I go to put it back on. So now I took the safety strap that I had here off the front of the boat. And now the only thing holding it with tension right now is this forward winch strap. Uh, the back ones are on there just for safety in case this would happen to let go or something. But the only thing really holding tension on the boat is this right now. So now the only other thing I need to do is put the line on and uh, we can bring it around and drop it in. So now I am launching by myself today. And I usually, the other thing I'll do is I'll open the window here as you can see. And sometimes I'll climb up and I'll actually drive the boat off and park it over at the dock. If you have a dock, that's a great way to do it. But one of the other ways is just as easy. It's just to attach a rope to the front cleat. And the way I do that is I just stick it through the bottom like that and come over both horns. This happens to be a bowling knot. You wanna have a loop that's big enough to do this. And now that's fastened on there. It's not gonna jump off. You never wanna just fasten it by just dropping it over the cleat like this. Okay, because it can, it can flop off like this and come off on you. So always stick it underneath just like this, bring it up both horns and lock it. Now it's not going anywhere. Then what I'll do is I'll coil this rope up and I'll lay it up on top of the deck like this, make sure it's not gonna get caught on anything and I'll tie it off to my truck. Then when I, I put the boat in the water, it'll just float away and then I can uh, just gently pull it in to where I want it to go, park the truck and pull it over to the dock. So once I have my rope looped up on my front cleat like that, I just drape it down and come up and come over my jack stem. That way it's not going to come off on me. Now I can just bring it around and get ready to back it up. A couple things to keep in mind. Sometimes ramps can be really slick. So it's best when you drive by them like I just did, you just check them out. Sometimes there'll be ice on them if you're going out in the fall, late fall or early spring. The other thing is uh, it could be slick from slime, from seaweed all kinds of things. Just always remember to check them out, see what you have to do. But regardless, what it's always best to do is put your truck in four-wheel drive if you have four-wheel drive. The other thing is don't depend on emergency brakes. Most emergency brakes were always made to stop a car going forward, not going back. So locking your emergency brake isn't as helpful in a backward position. That's one of the reasons I, I made that wood piece that I showed you earlier. When you put that in place, you lock all four brakes on all four wheels. And that way, you can be assured that even if your truck or your car pops out of gear, you're not going to slide down the ramp. I've seen it happen. It's disastrous. So it's for the sake of just cutting, uh, taking a few minutes, making up one of those of a piece of wood that you can get for free is a really awesome idea. And I think it can save you a lot of headaches. I never have to worry about my truck popping out of gear or any other issues once uh, it's unmanned and I'm on the boat or putting it over at the dock. Now that the boat's in the water, now I can take it off completely. Again, always use your brake stick. So once the boat comes back from the trailer, I just grab the front end like this and just walk it right over to the dock. Now, whenever I'm docking a boat with a line like this, I like to bring it on the windward side 
of the dock so I don't have to worry about it drifting off. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just bringing it around nice and gentle and what will happen is that wind will hold it nice and tight to the dock. There we go. I'll just tie this off. The easiest ways to tie off is just wrap it around, wrap it around, wrap it around, and now you're gonna do a half hitch. You're gonna turn it like that and put it over so it pulls that way, and you can turn it this way, pull that way. Now we'll go get the truck, park it, and we can head out. Coming into the dock, one of the things is you want to take into consideration is the wind. The wind actually is coming this way. So I want to dock on the windward side right here. So I'm just going to ease the boat around the side of the dock. And I'm going to just gently bring it in alongside. And then I'll give it a little bit of a, a backward motion and turn the motor towards the dock to really get things seated here. As you can see, I'm just drifting in a little bit. I'll just back it up. And I'll let the wind do the work. It's as simple as that. Now I'll tie off and go get the trailer. One of the other things you should always remember is when you're backing down a ramp, whichever way you want the trailer to go, turn the bottom of the wheel that way. So if you put your hand on the bottom of the wheel, like this, you can turn the trailer. If I want the trailer to go that way, I push the wheel that way. If I want the trailer to go this way, I push the wheel this way. It's that simple. I'm gonna put the trailer in right about there, the top of the wheel well. The reason I bring the trailer down to that level is because I want to be able to drive the boat up, but I don't want it to be uh, too hard to get it up on there. So you'll learn, to, uh, the more you do this, uh, you'll find that happy medium where you can drive the boat on, but it's not, you know, totally uh, suspended from the trailer. So you'll want that in between. And so now let's go jump on, get the boat, and we'll drive it on. You want to make sure you're out far enough so when you come into the trailer, you're coming in straight. You don't want to come in at all in a cross angle. So now you just take it nice and slow and line it up. And don't be afraid to stop and back up and try again if you're off a little bit. You're better off coming in nice and slow and straight and just lining things up. Now you'll notice at this point that I'm a little short of where I want to be. That's okay. At this point I'm going to bring the motor up a little bit, give it some gas, and it'll push me right up to the hook. Now I'll leave the motor running so I have tension pushing me that way and I'll just hook on the trailer. As 
So with the trailer hooked and a few clicks, uh, now all I'm going to do is shut the motor off and trim it up. You don't ever want to have the motor down when you pull out because you can wreck your skeg on the bottom, which is your like your tailpiece for a fin. Now what else I'll do is I'll just climb over the front of the boat and crank it up the rest of the way. So now that I'm off the boat, just crank it up the rest of the way. Now I'll pull it out enough to put the straps on the back and then I'll take it out the rest of the way. Always remember to pull your boat up slowly. You have water in the trailer, you have other things resisting. You don't want to create a lot of stress on things. Just pull it up slowly, let everything drain as you're coming out. Okay, now we'll close up the hatch. And I'll center up the motor. And we hook that. Make sure all the electronics are turned off. everything in place. We'll take whatever we want off the boat for now. Everything else can stay. Final things we'll do is lock the motor and we'll take the plugs out. So with everything stowed away and secured, let's head on home. Hey, I know there was a lot in that video today and hopefully you got something out of it. Even if you've been an experienced boater for years, you picked up one or two things that you can use down the road. And you know, well, if you're new to boating, uh, there's a lot in there as well, I know. But hopefully we, uh, leveled out the playing field for you a little bit and gave you some insight into things so that you, you wouldn't feel quite as overwhelmed. You know, in life, um, there are times when we get overwhelmed. And uh, it doesn't matter who we are, how much money we have, how successful, how unsuccessful, there are things that pop up in our life that are so much bigger than who we are. And in many cases, things we can't do anything about. Back in 2010, uh, I was having trouble swallowing. And so I went to the doctor, figuring I needed to get it checked out. And he did an endoscopy, put a scope down my throat to find out what the issue was. When I woke up from the procedure, uh, he looked at me and he said, I'm not even going to biopsy this. He says, you have cancer. So I met with my oncologist at the time and I had stage 3 esophageal cancer. I had a 14 to 16 percent chance of surviving. And the more research I did on it, the more I found that there was nothing out there because most people die from it. And as I met with the oncologist, he told me flat out, I had 36 months to live. No it's, ands, or buts about it. Nothing he could do. And so, what do you do with that? Well, I went to the one who was bigger than my problem. I went to God. And you know, I didn't run to God because I was frightened. I ran to God because he's my rock. I ran to God because ever since I was a young teenager, I've had a relationship with him that has transcended all my issues, all my problems, and given me peace even in the midst of my cancer. And I went before God and I said, God, what do you want me to do with this? I didn't say, why me, God, or, you know, poor me. I said, what do you want me to do with this? You see, because I knew I could trust God. Some people put our trust, we put our trust in money, we put our trust in securities, we put our trust in all, and they let us down. But I know the one thing that has never let me down is God. He has always, always looked out for me and always loved me, no matter what. That was one of the main reasons I came to know him as a teenager, because I'd always been looking for love. And when I found out that he was willing to sacrifice his one and only son, Jesus Christ, in order to buy me back from my sin so that he and I could have a right relationship and I could live to get with him in all eternity. Well, that was a no-brainer for me. And so I surrendered my heart to Christ then and I began to grow in him ever since. That was over 40 years ago. 
And I will tell you right here, right now, that God has never failed me. Now, as you can see, God has healed me from my cancer, and I am cancer-free, believe it or not. I do have disabilities, and I do have struggles because of it. But the fact of it is, God freed me from my cancer in order that I could be here today sharing his message with you. You know, I don't know what's going on in your life right now. I don't know where you are. But you know what? God is there for you, whether you're whole or whether you're broken. And I believe all of us are broken in some way. He can repair you. He can fix you. And more importantly, he can bring you in the right relationship with him. So that you can not only experience his joy and his peace, but you can experience his forgiveness and his love and live eternity with him forever. You know, if you're not sure how to go about having that relationship with God, well, it's really quite simple. It says in John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See, God's desire is to rescue you and I from our sin and bring us back home. But it takes us to believe in him to do that. And what does believe mean? Well, it doesn't mean to believe from afar. Well, I believe that's happening. It means to believe to a point of putting our trust in him. The fact that what he did is enough to rescue us and to forgive us for our sins. That's as simple as that. And you know, if you're not sure to, to how to go about having that relationship, how to, how to make that happen, well, I've written a short booklet. It's about 16 pages. It's free. It's in the description below. And all you got to do is click on it. It's called Growing Deep. And in it, I share with you a little bit about my life, uh, a little bit about how I came to Christ and why, and also, more importantly, the scriptures and how you can walk with God on a daily basis. So I'd really encourage you to check out the book. If you're at all seeking a relationship with God or seeking something more, consider God because he is the one that created you and he knows you best. So guys, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. We really, really appreciate it. And I really want you to remember that God loves you more than you could ever know. And his arms are always open wide. So until the next time, always remember to get outdoors. And God bless.